All right, everyone, it's six o'clock, so we will get started. Welcome to Forex for Beginners. Um, actually, I think we'll call it Forex slash binary for beginner beginners. Now Epic has added binary options trading classes to the, the schedule. So there is, the schedule is already full and now it's even more full with several binary options, uh, cl live classes that go on throughout the day. So definitely what you can do is go to your back office and click on the calendar link and you can see everything that's happening um, on a daily basis. So again, welcome to the call. So we host this call on Tuesdays and um, because there's already a full schedule with Epic and with Coach Max and Ryan's um, Dynasty Exchange Group, um, we're gonna keep this call to about a half hour, just kind of get you some nuggets and give you some of your time back. So hello to everyone that's joining. We are just getting started. So last week we started talking about chart patterns and we discussed channels. So we'll quickly review that and add on a couple of more uh, chart patterns for you to get familiar with and to keep an eye out for. So give me one second and I will share my screen. New share. Oh, and before I forget, this class, as well as all the ones in the past that we've done, this will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. And I'm going to paste the link for that in the chat so you'll have it. Okay, and there it is. And probably either late tonight or first thing in the morning, I'll get this class uploaded. So the format for the class, we're gonna try to keep it to about plus or minus a half hour. And we'll go over some concepts from Forex. And then we'll spend a few minutes with binary in case you hadn't seen it. I'll talk about um, the app that um, one app that we that we recommend and and how to actually place a trade. And tonight I'll show you one of the indicators that um, one of the binary traders talks about. So chart formations. Let's make that a little smaller so you can see the whole screen. Chart formations, channels, uh, and this is what we covered um, last week. So today we'll add on wedges. So let's get started. So first let's talk about a common pattern that you will see. Imagine that you are pulling up your chart. Maybe you have one to three favorite pairs that you like to mark up and kind of follow and, and trade if you're at that point. So when you pull it up in trading view, of course you wanna notice, well, am I in an uptrend? Am I going sideways in consolidation or am I in a downtrend? So once you have identified your trend, now you can begin to ask yourself, is price traveling in a channel? And so on this screen, this is an example of an up or ascending channel. And as you can see, I like to call it um, up the stairs or up the hill because there's a trend line here at the top. I'll use this arrow. And then there's another trend line here at the bottom. And it just so happens that these trend lines are parallel. So literally the way to know if you have a parallel channel is to draw your top trend line, copy, paste it, and see if you can get it to fit the bottom points um, for your uptrend. And in this case, the line, the same trend line fits on both the top and the bottom. And that's how we can describe an up or an ascending channel. So as the bullet points say, it's a parallel trend line and they actually serve as support and resistance. So it's a great way to, to practice your trades 
going from the bottom trend line up to the top. So here is an example of a buy that you can take from the bottom trend line up to the top. If you don't mind counter trend trading, you can sell it back down. But because we're in an uptrend, maybe you just want to stick with the buys so that you are trading with the trend. So this is just a quick review. Then we also talked about the same parallel lines forming the, the channel, but now we're in a downtrend. So we highlighted some cells that you can take from the top of the trend line down to the bottom. And the cool thing about these chart patterns is that you can find them on any time frame. So if you're a scalper and you, and you like to look at the five or 15 minute chart, um, this will work for you. If you're more of an intraday trader and you like to stick to the hour chart, you can find these formations. Or if you're a swing um, trader and you want to hold it and you're trading off the four hour or higher, uh, either way, you can take these same <clears throat> buys or sells. And then the last chart pattern that we identified last week was a symmetrical triangle. So in this case, you drew your trend line here at the top. And clearly, if you try to copy that this top trend line and place it here on the bottom, it is not going to fit your points. Instead, this bottom trend line is going to meet this top one. And so it's going to converge in the middle. And when they meet like this, <clears throat> this is called a symmetrical triangle. You can still take trades uh, from the top to the bottom, but just know it's going to converge to a point. And here's, in this case, it's popular to wait for price, for price to break out. You're either going to uh, go into a buy when price makes up its mind, or price may break out to the downside and you can uh, be prepared for a sell. So that's a quick review on what we covered last week. We also talked about just tips on drawing a trend line <clears throat> in general. And I remember last week um, I gave you a link to Savvy's um, trend line class because it was so good in one of her um, previous trainings, Saturday trainings, um, you could actually get practice and draw it on the spot and she would give you excellent feedback on that. So, but basically you wanna, if at all possible, include the wicks. You definitely don't wanna draw your trend line and have it cutting through the body of your candle. And again, <clears throat> just to point it out, uh, the body is going to be like the rectangular part of the candle and the wick is the skinny line that may stick out of the top or the bottom. <clears throat> so today we want to add on two more chart formations. The first one being a falling wedge. So again, we're still just doing a trend line on the top and we're doing a trend line at the bottom. And if you try to draw this top trend line, copy it and paste it, you'll see it's not going to fit. Uh, these lines very well. So in this case, you know, price is not always um, in a nice, pretty parallel channel. So sometimes it makes triangles and wedges. And here's an example. So in this case, the falling wedge is typically after you see this wedge, normally price is going to break up to the upside. So that's what we mean by bullish. Price is going to increase after that. And typically, you know, if it's in an uptrend and then you see this falling wedge, price is going to continue up. And if this was a downtrend and then you have this falling wedge, then a lot of times, more times than not, price is going to reverse and go up. So that's one example of a falling wedge. And I wrote down cat chef on the one hour. So when we go over to trading view, we can remember where this is and see it on a real chart. <clears throat> and then an example of a rising wedge that I found was on EuroCAD on the 30 minute. So for a rising wedge, after price um, gets to this point, expect a breakout in either direction, up or down. So in this case, price broke out to the downside. So for an uptrend, 
in this case, um, then it can turn around and go downward. And if this rising wedge is at the end of a downtrend, then price may continue um, going down like it did here. So if you look at all of these examples, what they have in common is going to your chart and drawing your trend lines and seeing if the trend lines are parallel or if they're converging to a point. So let's take a look um, in trading view at a live example. So let's go to CATCHF on the one hour to take a look at this falling wedge. So give my screen a chance to catch up, okay. I like to trade NAS 100, it's an index. Let's look for um, catch F. So let me uh, clean up some of these indicators so that the chart can be a little cleaner. Anytime you add an indicator um, on your chart, you can click on this eyeball to hide it if you want um, a cleaner view. There we go. And I'll hide some of these smooth move, moving averages as well. All right, let's pick up Cat Chef here at the top. I have a watch list. So here are all the, pretty much all of the currency pairs here and you can add them to your list. If you don't have that, just simply come here to the upper left, type in your pair and then choose the time frame that you want to view. Something that's really handy in trading view is right click reset chart and it'll clean it up for you because when you go from one time frame to another, you may or may not have um, a clean view. So right click reset chart will always get you a nice clean look. So here is where um, we found this falling wedge. So what I wanted to, to close out talking about is how um, we would place a trade let's say we wanted to trade um, this falling wedge. So what you can do is look for a sell entry here at the top, and then you would that would be your entry, and then your take profit would be here at the bottom of the trend line. So what I wanted to um, discuss as we close out is no matter what strategy you're using, if you're trading with trend lines, if you're trading with moving averages, if you're trading support and resistance, breaking out, um, break and retest of your zones, you want to focus on getting a, um, a good entry and not a, a late entry. So what I mean by that is you want to take your entry as close to this trend line as possible. And why is that? Because the closer to this entry that you take um, your trade, the better your risk to reward ratio is. What is risk to reward ratio? It means how many pips am I risking from my entry to my stop loss? That's my risk. If I lose this trade, how many pips would I have lost? So that's how you define your risk. And then your reward is how many pips can I gain? So if I enter this trade really close to my trend line, then my stop loss will use a red arrow for that. So let's just right click on the arrow, change the color to red. And let's do um, a horizontal line for our entry so we can sort of pinpoint it. So green will be our entry. Let's make that green. So if I can enter close to that trend line, then 
I'm entering here for my cell. Let's type that out. So I'm going for a cell. This green arrow represents my entry. Then if I'm expecting price to respect this top trend line sort of as a resistance, if price breaks out and goes the other way, then I don't have to wait very long to know that I can exit my trade. So I can have um, a really tight stop loss. That's why I love um, trading from a trend line, whether it's a channel or just a trend line in general, because if price goes the other way, you're gonna know relatively quickly that the trade is not going your way. So you can have a relatively tight five to 10 pip stop loss when trading uh, from a trend line, a channel, a wedge, a triangle. So the closer I get in, my risk is not going to have to be but a few pips. Now, what happens in, in real, real life, you are, let's say you see this candle and you're thinking, mm, that wick, it's really rejecting that trend line. It's respecting it as resistance. And you're thinking about entering for a sell. But, you know, let's draw. Here's one way to hide price. There's, there's lots of ways to do it, but let's do this. So let's make this a nice dark color so we can't um, see the candles inside of it. So I want the background, I'm gonna make it, there we go. Okay, so this is what we see. We see this wick entry, this wick here, and we know that price is, is rejecting that trend line. It doesn't really wanna break through it. So here's the point where we're thinking about a sell. Now we can't see what's gonna happen in the future, right? But ideally at the close of this candle is when we would get in for our sell. Maybe um, in a be better example, the wick gets all the way to the trend line. But in any event, we are considering our sell, okay? So what happens a lot of times is that we don't pull the trigger for whatever reason. This candle happens, we wait for it to close, and now we are halfway to our TP. So put it in the chat. Is it too late to take the trade once this candle closes with this being our TP? What's your opinion? Put it in the chat, yes or no. After this candle closes, can we enter the cell here? Or should we enter the cell with our TP down here at the bottom? Yes or no in the chat. What do you guys think? Still valid for for entry? Okay. Hey, Chris. Any other ideas? There's no right or wrong answer. We just want to talk about it. All right. All right. So those who enter the trade here know that your stop loss is still here at the top. Yep, Neri, that's what I was thinking. So imagine, and I'm gonna use one more, <laughs> exactly, Stacy. I'm gonna use uh, another arrow here, and I'm gonna call that one, let's shade it blue. So optimal entry is here because I only have a few pips risk for my stop loss, right? But I, once I see that what we like to do is have this candle close completely to verify that we're in a downtrend. But once this candle closes, now our risk has to go from the green arrow all the way to the red. So there's no right or wrong answer, but the optimal entry is here because you have such a small stop loss you can still enter the trade here and guess what? You're gonna win it, zero drawdown. 
but understand that price can very well travel back up to that trend line before falling down. And, you know, we don't have foresight into the future. Some trades will do that. You'll enter zero drawdown and you go straight to your TPs. Other times, more times than not, when I have a stressful trade, is because I this is what I call a stressful trade. You can enter here, but you could go into immediate drawdown as price travels back up to that trend line. Your analysis is still accurate. It's still uh, technically sound to take a sell from the blue arrow and the green arrow. Both trades will win, but in terms of um, less stress and less drawdown, if you take the entry here, no drawdown at all, um, and you can go straight to your TP. So those are, are the, some of the things that we wanna think about in terms of finding our, our um, best entry. But just know that when you find that optimal entry that doesn't have a lot of drawdown, a lot of times, you're going to have to trust your analysis because you're not going to have the candlesticks to verify it. The best trades that have the best risk to reward ratio happen before price takes off. The best trades with the best risk to reward ratio, you enter those trades before price takes off. And so that's something that we have to get accustomed to because we have to wait a little bit. Taking the trade, um, let me move this rectangle. Yeah, taking the trade here at the green arrow is a lot more comforting. We just run the risk of drawdown. But taking the trade here at the blue gives us the better risk to reward ratio. And it, it sets us up um, long-term to have more winning trades because, or to have a, a better account balance. Because even if we lose this trade, we're only down a few pips. If we enter here and something goes wrong, then we're down more. So that's the point that I wanted to make there. Any questions before we uh, go over to, to binary? Any questions or comments? Let's definitely um, challenge ourselves, and I'm speaking to myself <laughs> to to get the to get the better entries, the ones with the best risk to reward. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, I got in a little late. Apologize, but I'm trying to understand uh -huh. the meaning of your trend line. The meaning of the trend lines. Yeah, trend lines track price. And trend lines can be our best friends because they give us an idea not only of where price has been, but where it's going. So let's go, let me find another example. So when price started in this downtrend, I'm gonna borrow this blue arrow. So price here was on an uptrend, plateaued a bit, and then it started falling down. So you need two valid points to connect for a trend line. So I'm gonna come here to my trend line tool and I'm going to um, make a connection. I'm going to connect this wick and this wick. And guess what? I'm going to, I'm on a PC. I'm going to do control Z and control V so that I can copy or duplicate that trend line. I'm gonna connect some of the wigs and look, what do we have here? A descending channel. So to make a trend line valid, you only need to connect at least two points of the, of the candles. And the wicks are a great place to make that connection. 
Then I copied it. And it just so happens that Price is respecting the trend lines on both sides. So this one is kind of serving as resistance. It's not going any higher. And then this trend line is serving as support because the candles are sitting on it. It's like the floor. It can't go any lower. So once you have um, even this area here, you can draw these trend lines and it can give you an idea of where price will go inside of this channel. So that's why trend lines are important and trend lines can sometimes um, lead to channels. So did that answer your question a little bit? Perfect, awesome, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, so trend lines is definitely the, the place to start and I don't have Savvy's link with me. I know I posted it in last week's video. Trend lines is definitely the place to start because once you understand trend lines, then the next step is channels and wedges and, and triangles. But yeah, you definitely wanna be able to draw a trend line to just track price for your uptrend, for your downtrend, um, or sideways for your consolidation. And it's a great place to do a trade because once you have the trend line drawn, you can trade from your top trend line down to your bottom. Any other questions? All right, well, we will switch gears and I will show you guys pocket option. And we've done um, an intro class to binary options trading to show you what it is feel free to, to go on my YouTube site, it's in the chat and you can um, watch that overview. But basically binary options trading, we have the same chart. So what you're looking at looks a lot like trading view, but basically the whole goal is to determine if price is going to be higher or lower than the point where you take the trade and it's timed base. So, I am on the one minute chart and I may want to take a 30 second trade and you're able to add indicators and do technical analysis to help you um, estimate if price, this is you know the live candles, is price when you enter the trade, is it gonna go higher? You, you would press this green button for a call, or do you think 30 seconds from now, price is going to be lower? If you think it's gonna be lower, then you would hit this red button. Um, some brokers call it a put. So the reason I'm showing you guys pocket option is with binary options trading, um, very few brokers will give you a demo account. It's pretty, common practice, you know, on the Forex side, not so much with binary options. So pocket options, this particular broker will give you a demo account, start you with uh, maybe a thousand dollars or so. So we'll just do a quick review. Here is where you choose which asset you're going to look at. So here are your Forex pairs. We're used to all of these. You can do cryptocurrency, commodities, and stocks. Now I follow the training of um, Sauce. He is one of the new Epic binary options traders. I really enjoy his classes. They are Monday through Friday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. See the Epic calendar for those. And he recommends or what he typically trades um, are the commodities. So that's what I've been practicing on. Now this percentage, his name is, <laughs> Neri, his name is Sauce. I'm going to type it into the chat. <laughs> yeah, that's his name. He's from, I think he also goes by um, DC Sniper, but we call him Sauce. 
And that's how you can find him in Telegram as well. Um, so with Sauce, <laughs> this uh, he's taught us that this percentage here gives us our payout. So if I want to take a trade, then I'm going to choose the amount um, of the trade, the amount that I'm going to risk. So as soon as I enter this trade, you will see my balance balance subtract whatever this dollar amount is. And if I win the trade, it's going to put my $50 back plus 92% of that $50. So it's recommended, some choose um, to go with the higher payouts. Notice that uh, Euro USD pays out 80%, whereas Odd Chef only pays out 50%. 50%. Now it's two schools of thought. Some would say, well, the lower the payout, the more stable and predictable the pair is. Whereas the higher payout may be more volatile, you know? So there's a trade off there. But I've been following sauce and um, trading on the commodities. So once you pick what you're um, trading, then this next icon. It's just kind of like um, trading view. You pick which time frame. So this is in seconds, the M is in minutes, and the H is in hours. And we want to choose candles because that's um, what we're used to. Now, there are lots and lots and lots of icons here. I'm only going to show you the basics just so that you'll have enough to get started. Now, this last, um, this next icon is where you choose your indicators. So just like TradingView, you can put various indicators on the chart. Um, we're gonna talk about the moving average one. And then also like TradingView, you can actually draw a horizontal line, vertical line, trend line, what, what we've been talking about, parallel channel, rectangle. So you have some drawing tools there. So one particular moving average um, that Sauce recommends is the 14. So once you select the moving average, just like TradingView, you can click on the eye and that will hide it. You can click on the pencil to edit it. And we're using the 14 and we want the simple moving average. The SMMA is the smooth smooth moving average. So we're gonna use the simple one and you can click on style and make it, you know, any color that you want. And here is where you choose the thickness of the line. Okay. So the purpose, um, here's the really fun thing about binary. The same analysis that we've used for Forex, you can apply it here. So I like to practice binary um, at night. I typically trade New York session. So the nighttime Asia session is, is when I typically um, practice binary. And these commodities are open on the weekend. So when the Forex market closes Friday at five, you actually can practice in your live or demo account with binary on the weekends. So the same way that we use a moving average in Forex with our analysis, we can do so here, meaning when price um, is above this moving average, we're going to be looking for buys. Likewise, when price falls under this moving average and stays under this moving average, we're going to be looking for sales. So let's just do a practice one so you can see how a trade looks. So my technical analysis says, let's go for a buy. I think price is going to respect this moving average. So I'm going, going to click on trades. And right now, here is my open trades. I am winning because it's showing in green. And there are 15 seconds left in this trade. So as long as I see green here, I am winning. Now I am losing the trade as price has fallen below where I entered. All right, so I think I lost that trade. The trade 
trade has been closed, profit zero. That was a losing trade. So I'll come here to close and I can, here is my history. Okay. So that's an example of how you um, would take a trade. You can click on trade to close that window. And you can vary this amount. You can risk $5, you can risk $10, you know, you definitely need to have um, risk management. You can risk $100. But that's an example of how to trade, how to take a binary options trade here on pocket option. Um, if you click on that first, this is how you can switch between your demo and your live account. So you can see I'm here in my demo. Any questions on pocket options? You know, if you're if you're still really new to Forex, you you may not want to dive into this um, just yet. Um, I enjoy it. I think it's it's pretty fun. I like seeing the the parallels in the technical analysis. Um, but it's definitely a, a different way to trade once you add the, the time component onto it. And um, with Sauce's class, I think altogether there are about six different indicators that he uses for his strategy. So I just wanted to show you just one of them today. Any questions before we go? Don't be shy. All right, everyone, um, I will get this video posted on my YouTube site and good night and happy trading.